Please be advised that this episode of the War Dog Trail hosted by Sergeant War Dog contains material that may bring about thoughts of the past in forms but not limited to PTSD, depression, and others. Please note, if you think that something might be said that could cause this for you, please do not listen any further. Again, this episode of the War Dog Trail contains material that may bring about things from the past. Listen at your own discretion. If you need to speak with someone during or after the show, please reach out to Battle in Distress or someone that you trust. Thank you and please do enjoy the show along with a few songs from the Sergeant's Playlist. Please remember the views and opinions expressed by this show or any other show on DV Radio and its guests are strictly those of said individuals and do not reflect those of the DV Radio staff nor the staff of dysfunctional veterans. Let's go to war, baby! Let's go to war, baby! Steve James, that's what it is. All I know is war. All I know is shoot. All I want is more I'm a soldier, I'm a warrior Got a emblem on my cover And ask me what I did for ya I put the trash deep down under, yeah I'm a dog of war Hell's what I've been through I'm a dog of war I did it all for you, yeah Welcome to the War Dog Trail. This is episode 13. Before this episode, uh, I know everything that uh, that I do and put out has been uh, amateur. Um, There's no question about that. I haven't in any way ever uh, told you that I was anything other than a Marine grunt. But I did want to reach out to uh, war veterans in any way possible to let them know they aren't alone, to help with the suicide prevention, and to put the word out about uh, Camp Doghouse that we are building to house homeless veterans here in Central Florida. That said, um, I will let you know that everything you see or hear, whether it's from this podcast, from the web series, Sergeant War Dog TV, from social media, from images, uh, I create everything uh, on my own, run everything on my own. And I do this all based on my uh, health situations at that particular day or moment time. So because my health is so unpredictable, I cannot at this time provide you with a specific date or time that uh, podcast episodes or webisodes will be uh, produced or created. And most of that is because of the fact that, as I've mentioned, uh, with most other war veterans, the physical and mental pains that we experience can all fall on you at the uh, at the drop of a hat. They can come on you at any time, especially unexpectedly. So everything revolving the War Dog Trail. Sergeant War Dog TV and any other plans I try to make in my life are all contingent upon my uh, my health at the time, which uh, currently I've, I've been battling uh, another horrible bout of tinnitus, tinnitus. Uh, both of my eardrums were burst, blown. From my three tours in Iraq, so these past six days have been hell on earth for me. A straight, non-stop 
ringing. I mean, ringing loud enough that I can't even hear what other people are saying to me when they speak. That obviously it leads to, uh, because of your ears and your drums are so close to your uh, your brain. And, uh, those pains automatically lead to horrible and uh, debilitating migraines as well. This episode we're going to continue in uh, part three of the discussion of tinnitus and dealing with it. Um, and for the first time since I'm now trying to professionalize this podcast as much as possible, we will have broadcasts longer than the usual 15 minutes. And I'm going to begin to introduce Sergeant's Playlist to you. And uh, if I haven't said it before, the Sergeant's Playlist is simply my selection of uh, new and unheard of artists from all genres that I come across on YouTube, YouTube Music, Spotify, SoundCloud, you name it. If I hear it and I can vibe to it, and it coincides with uh, my either podcast content or outdoor TV content. Um, I receive personal permission from each artist to feature their music, and uh, then I use it to collab and try to put out, you know, something for the war veterans, man. Discussing tinnitus again, or uh, tinnitus, and uh, for what my audiologist at the VA have told me, um, we can use either form of the word, whether it's tinnitus or tinnitus. I've already in the last two episodes told you how badly. Uh, the pain can get how debilitating. Going over some of the methods or some of the uh, events during the Iraq War that caused my eardrums to be blown, whether that was uh, planes uh, or uh, Cobra helicopters or being around the tanks or being around artillery when they've need to fire danger close within several hundred yards of our position to uh, get the enemy off of us or help you survive a firefight. uh, Let me mention, man, the longest firefight that I was ever in lasted 14 hours. It was uh, just outside of Fallujah back in 2004. A city called uh, Al Carmel. And that fire, that gunfight, and that firefight lasted from uh, two in the morning. Was uh, when we got on site. We've already gone over the fact that tinnitus has no cure. So the best that you can hope for is to uh, use coping techniques, such as masking, in order to help you endured the pain to alleviate some of the uh, pain and suffering that come with it. Uh, I mentioned in the last episode times when we had to have you know doors blown off or knocked off so that we could make entry into buildings, houses uh, what have you. And uh, and making those dynamic entries. Most of the time, my hearing problems, uh, times when when I I know for a fact I completely went stone deaf, usually came when uh, we needed to get into a place, to get into a building. And obviously the door might have been locked, so we either, you know, attached the line charge, attached some C4 of the door and blew it. And then, you know, 
continued on with our dynamic entry to meet the enemy and engage the enemy. Or during times when uh, guys might use their rifles or uh, 12 gauge shotguns to come and shoot the hinges off the door so that we can make entry. Now, besides those entries that I knew gave me a lot of ear damage because they my ears rung so loud that uh, eventually they, they reached a peak and I just couldn't hear a damn thing for a while. I mean, I could see the other Marines speaking to me. I could see their lips moving and all, but I was standing there yelling, what, you know, over and over because I had no idea what the hell they were saying. Uh, another major incident that I know led to my own eardrum damage took place during the first tour in Iraq. Shortly after we crossed the border, maybe within the first week of the war, I remember rolling into some town where we noticed that uh, all the weapons in the city, you know, majority of the uh, the ammo, the guns, the mortars. Majority of the weapons cache happened to be in schools and going by the Geneva Convention and uh, some of the laws of war, warfare, we generally try not to attack or blow up you know, certain key facilities within a community. Uh, obviously, you had the mosques so that we could respect religion. Um, and then there were also schools, hospitals, that sort of thing. So that, you know, you minimize as much damage as possible to facilities that are needed to cater to the populace. Um, went into a school once. Saw, you know, AKs and RPGs everywhere within that school, which they they knew we weren't allowed to or supposed to attack. But uh, usually the way that works is, or at least for us in the Marine Infantry, uh, if you start to take fire from any of those places, hospitals, uh, from schools, we were then authorized, you know, to meet that threat head on. And if that meant blowing the building and every motherfucker in it. Well, there was a school or anything else, and that's what had to happen. So, going through the school and clearing, and uh, in the infantry field, man, room clearing and urban ops is just one aspect of what you do. And uh, I primarily had a big thing on the I've always been a big fan of SWAT SWAT techniques. So uh, going through that 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 school, you know, we're blowing doors, making entry, uh, button hooking, crossing. You know, we're searching every bathroom, closet, hallway, door. And uh, I want to point out that might be one of the biggest differences, in my opinion, between. What I've known and seen SWAT teams in the U.S. to do, where they might hit one house, one or two houses, and then, you know, capture or engage whoever their mission required them to uh, to deal with. And then after that one house, man, they're done. That's it. But during a war, you don't just hit one house when you're a grunt, man, when you're in the infantry. You're going after every house in the whole damn city, the whole neighborhood. If you think about any building or home you've been into, think about all the places that a person could hide. A person could already have a gun waiting for you to walk in so that they could... uh, take you out I can't describe the amount of pressure and readiness that you need to have at all times to constantly 
be going and searching for these people and bedrooms, bathrooms, every closet, every office, every backyard. If it's a two-story building, you know, you're clearing each floor. Um, there are times when we cross the border when I was a bit confused during my first tour. When I look over to my left or right, while you know the rest of my entire company of Marines raiding these cities and villages searching like I said not just one building or house but every single house there every room I'd look over see SUVs primarily right now I'm remembering uh, there were a lot of Mitsubishi Montero SUVs and uh, usually that's where you'd have spec special ops guys uh, at times I've seen you know Team of SEALs would wait behind us in, uh, in SUVs. Other times you might see uh, ODA guys from the Army, Special Forces guys. Um, for a long time, it confused me why they weren't out there with us going house to house. And that was until I you know, later became to understand the concept of direct action and low intensity conflicts where similar to a police officer or deputy sheriff that patrols, you know, a local uh, zone or region, you might go through the same neighborhood, walk past the same houses day by day and not know that someone else is watching that house as a target, watching the individuals in that house as a target. So I've been on few ops where, say, we might, we as Marines might wait on the perimeter of a city or wait, you know, on the street that a particular uh, target house is on. And then uh, specifically, I remember one op in 2004 where uh, SEAL Team 7 came in by Hilo. Uh, we were out surrounding the city. I was freezing my balls off in the middle of the cold desert at 2 or 3 in the morning. You know, scanning with my night vision goggles. Other guys scanning with their thermals. But uh, their only specific mission, only uh, direct action task, was to fly in, hit one particular house, gather any uh, individuals or intel that they were told to uh, to get. And these are places that uh, some of these guys might have been like IED or bomb makers. If you remember the uh, deck of cards that was out during the first, during the beginning of the Iraq War, if you remember, there's a deck of cards that was made of all the top uh, personnel in the Iraqi military that we needed to, or that we wanted to find and uh, capture required. A lot of those direct action missions involve things of that nature, you know, whether it was, uh, you know, something as large as the Jessica Lynch uh, rescue and recovery, where uh, I think it was a team of Delta operators, Delta Force operators that went in and got her out. And like I said, you know, they come in smaller teams, but each don't get it mistaken at all. Each person within that team, male or female, is usually qualified to do several jobs, man. They all have, I mean, not just one set skill. Each person there can do everything from being a sniper to a medic to a driver to being able to speak a foreign language and interpret for you. Each uh, person within these teams, they're all highly trained and have been through some of the toughest schools in the world. So they all have, are, they're all multi-talented. They all have uh, many skills, man. But uh, that was my first introduction to uh, the SWAT way of doing things. Where, you know, a specific house, target house is hit, and then you leave. Or, uh, the, like I said, with the direct action missions of the military, uh, seeing the special ops guys behind us as the infantry, 
or not even coming in at all because we were there specifically during the day with the enemy knowing knowing when we're coming. We were specifically there to raid and find and kill and eliminate every single enemy within that city, village, or town. And that meant we hit every single building. Room, bathroom, doorway. As opposed to uh, the the other, like I said, special ops guys uh, or recon marines or force recon marines coming in and striking one or two houses and then leaving. Uh, take that, the SWAT and the special ops missions on uh, as far as approaching target house or target location versus the conventional warfare method of uh, what an infantryman has to do and uh, there's there's just no comparison there's really no comparison but uh, before we take our first break here and I'll let you hear the first song from this artist's playlist with our first artist uh, I'll just end that story telling you wait, we, we searched that school we found tons of ammo bomb making materials uh, guns obviously bullets within that school so we cleared all of our guys out we set up demo explosives on the building on that uh, on those munitions and weapons and on a specific day that I'm referring to during the first week of the war I know for a fact that I suffered a lot of uh, hearing damage and probably even a concussion after we performed a controlled detonation of that school. Uh, you know, we all took cover, uh, crouched down somewhere, waited for the building to blow, waited a minute or two, got the all clear, and then, you know, we came from our concealed positions and uh, proceeded on, Walk began to walk past the building, walk past that school, and... Out of nowhere, man, the building blew again from secondary explosions, you know, from the munitions that were inside. I mean, we, our control debt blew, you know, what it could blow, and then certain things just catching on fire and whatnot. As we were walking past the school, the fucking building blew again. And I'm talking, you know, flying glass um, obviously it was loud as hell uh, it blew my ears again that time pretty much rung all of our bells but not enough to the point that we you know, ended up being unconscious and even if it was man you gotta remember this is the first week of the war so if you weren't dead man or severely wounded you did everything you could to keep up with your team, with your squad as a Marine and uh, continue to fight, man. Because at that time, everything was hot. Everything. There were no bases left uh, at that time. There were no places to go and get, you know, hot showers or to use the Internet, that sort of thing. Because we were the first ones in. First ones in across the border. First one's in all the way to get to the capital to get to Baghdad. This time, no further ado, I want to introduce to you an artist by the name of Caleb Daniels. Young 17, 18 year old kid out of us, out of Michigan. I want to say Saginaw, Michigan. Uh, This first song by him is titled Get the Bag. And this is your introduction to the Sargent's playlist. Salute. Let's go to war! Hey, 
wake up in the morning, get the bag. Get the Stay bag. up till the morning, they familiar with the bag. With the and that's the price you pay when you be trying to get the bag. Get the I bag. put on for my city, bitch, I do it for the same. Hey, huh? wake up in the morning, get the bag. Get the Stay bag. up till the morning, they familiar with the bag. With the and that's the price you pay when you be trying to get the bag. Get the I put bag. on for my city, bitch, I do it for the same. And I gotta get the bag, that's a bare necessity. I'm cooking up the sauce, bitch, I got the recipe And I treat this like a race, no one gets ahead of me And I'll do this till I die, I put that shit on everything And I pull up on the scene, and this ain't what it seems Trying to differentiate with what I want and what I need And I ain't trying to wake up from this million dollar dream Need a million dollar deal, got a million dollar team Need a million dollar check so I can spend it all on me I've been working like a maniac, I'm putting in some weeks I've been putting in some years, and I don't fuck with fear And I'm about to speed it up like I'm switching gears and I'm doing what I want I don't listen to my peers Make the shit I wanna make, not the shit they wanna hear And all I see is hope when I look up in the mirror Cause I see a young goat, tell the bag I'm getting near, I'm on the way Wake up in the morning, get the bag get the Stay bag. up till the morning, they familiar with the bag with the And that's bag. the price you pay when you be trying to get the bag get the I bag. put on for my city, bitch, I do it for the same Fuck you, hey, huh? Wake up in the morning, get the bag, get the bag. Stay up till the morning, they familiar with the bag with the Price you pay when you be trying to get the bag. Get the I put on for my city, bitch. I do it for the same. I'm the everywhere kid. I'm everywhere now. And my family and my homies, yeah, that's all I care about. If she hit me up and ask me all about my whereabouts, that's another thing that she probably shouldn't worry about. But I'm probably in the booth, and I'm just getting loose. We about to warm it up, but you know we keep it cool. And I've been learning everything I wish I learned in school. That's the reason why I'm fucking around and breaking every rule. And this will make them duck, so put it on. On the tape. If I ain't doing this, then I'm making a mistake. If I'm pursuing this, we gon' take it out the state. And I keep it A1, bitch, we raising up the stakes. What you think? Wake up in the morning, get the bag. Get the Stay bag. up till the morning, they familiar with the bag. With the and that's the price you pay when you be trying to get the bag. Get the I bag. put on for my city, bitch, I do it for the same. Hey, huh? Wake up in the morning, get the bag. Get the Stay bag. up till the morning, they familiar with the bag. With the and bag. that's the price you pay when you be trying to get the bag. Get the I put on for my city, bitch, I do it for the same. Hey. Please be advised that this episode of the War Dog Trail hosted by Sergeant War Dog contains material that may bring about thoughts of the past and forms, but not limited to, PTSD, depression, and others. Please note, if you think that something might be said that could cause this for you, please do not listen any further. Again, this episode of the War Dog Trail contains material that may bring about things from the past. Listen at your own discretion. If you need to speak with someone during or after the show, please reach out to Battle in Distress or someone that you trust. Thank you and please do enjoy the show along with a few songs from the Sergeant's Playlist. Alright, that was Caleb Daniels out of Michigan with the song Get the Bag. Uh, Caleb's originally from Kentucky. And he's probably the youngest artist I have on the uh, Sergeant's playlist. You can find him on Instagram at I am Caleb Daniels or on Twitter at I am Caleb Daniels. Let's see, continuing, continuing with the issue of uh, tinnitus. We've gone over some of the remedies to include the... Uh, Hearing aids that have that play white noise for uh, masking that loud and painful ringing from your blown eardrums or perforated or burst air, eardrums. Uh, some people find relief using just simple cotton balls, depending on their level of ringing, the the volume of their ringing. That doesn't work for me. Uh, before I was given my hearing aids seven years ago. I was first given um, 
a mold, an ear mold that fits the uh, inside of your uh, ear canal and it blocks any wind or loud sounds from uh, attacking your eardrum. And those worked for me for a while until the ringing became a daily issue that I had to deal with. I mean, it went from once every blue moon to every day. And then the volume of that damn ringing went from simple uh, low-level ringing, you know, which is, some, which, is, which is manageable. I mean, don't get me wrong. When I tell you this is debilitating, and that, yeah, even after, as an infantry marine, as a sergeant, going to Iraq three times, all of that shit. When it gets to those certain debilitating levels, those levels that uh, truly make your ears hurt, that can cause any other sounds, or I'm sorry, any other sounds can uh, trigger that, that, that ringing and that pain. I had to go towards uh, hearing aids that did have the tentative sound generators built in to play white noise for me all day to provide some form of relief because I was going fucking crazy, man. And it's just my personal opinion here, but I think that just one small factor in veteran suicide and you know, so much of, of what we've been hearing about with uh, veteran suicide, I really think a large proportion might revert to uh, seeing suicide as their only option because there is no cure and the ringing never stops and it is painful as fuck. Uh, it's, it's hard, like I said, to make any plans, man, for your life, for your day. When the slightest noise that is either too loud or that has too high of a pitch can set your eardrums off so that they are nonstop constantly ringing and causing you pain for, man, up to two to three weeks straight. And when that shit becomes unbearable, I have to admit that even I have had times where I wanted to just blow my own goddamn head off because the ringing and the pain and the inability to stop that shit is just too much to bear. And so, like I said, that that's what I feel is one reason, just one reason why so many veterans might succumb to suicide or see that as their only option of a form of relief. Uh, like I said, I used to try things like uh, dumping my head, dunking my head into a sink full of water and, you know, just staying there and covering my nose and, you know, trying to clear your, uh, your eardrums as much as possible, trying to clear those ear canals, you know, trying to make your ears pop in the right way. And I uh, usually... Personally, each time I do that, each time I you know, cover my nose and blow in order to help the ears or ear pains, I can always hear little, you know, little popping or bubbling or releases of a little sound and pressure. And uh, sometimes that's all it takes to, uh, to help with the pain. But then there are those other days, man, where shit's so loud, so intense, so painful that the only thing I can do is go to uh, the Brainwave Tuner app or the uh, White Noise app and just listen to those sounds for hours or for days and just wait out the pain, man. You have to wait until your body, your ears decide to stop hurting you, man, until they can diminish to a level that's somewhat bearable. Uh, we've all seen, or most, you know, most of us have seen those comparisons, those uh, sound decibel comparisons where, uh, you know, they might compare the loudness of an air, air plane engine to 
the loudness of a concert to the loudness of being in an NFL stadium or a college football stadium. But nine times out of ten, man, the loudest and first choice on those uh, comparison charts are usually gunshots. They are by far the usually the loudest and most painful. And when you're an infantry marine, that just becomes you know part of the job. I mean, whether you're dealing with firing your own weapons to the sound of mortars dropping near you, car bombs, buildings blowing, uh, C4 for blowing off doors, using 12 gauges to shoot the hinges off doors. Any of those loud sounds, man, that you're dealing with and you're hearing day by day, uh, especially danger close, man. If you're in the shit, you're in a lot, you're a heavy firefight with the enemy, you need a plane or tank or artillery round or even a Cobra helicopter to come around along with a Hellfire missile. The closer you are to needing that ordinance dropped for your survival, the likely, the higher the uh, likelihood of you having to deal with the concussive forces that come from those blasts, and uh, specifically, besides you know possible concussions or the waves that can, the, the force waves, the sound waves that can come across you, um, damage to your ears, man. Damage to your eardrums is a major uh, after effect of being a frontline infantry guy. These past three episodes in which I've discussed uh, tinnitus and ear pains are uh, all obviously mean a lot to me because I suffer from it on a day-to-day basis. But uh, even more so, I put them all out there so that any and every war veteran can know that they are not alone in dealing with this issue. They're not alone in this type of suffering. They are not alone in feeling that sometimes suicide is the only option or might be, or, you know, they, if they feel that's the best option, I'm never saying that that's, that's right. But obviously with the uh, volume of veteran suicides that we have, in our country and with military veterans around the world, man. Uh, or war veterans around the world. Dealing with that debilitating condition in and of itself can be a major factor that most people, most civilians can't relate to, don't understand, uh, they might feel they understand on a certain level because they work in uh, fields that are around loud noise. But nothing will compare to those guys who work with guns, who, work, who fire machine guns on you know thousands of rounds for a living. Because remember, with those comparison shots, uh, comparison charts, few things uh, are as loud and damaging as uh, gunshots. And for me, using that M249, man, able to fire hundreds of rounds a minute, especially with barrel change, or the M240, uh, or any of the, the weapon systems that the military has that can fire automatically. You're not just dealing with one shot and then one painful ring. You're dealing with thousands of shots and thousands of times of uh, each of your eardrums, you know, having to take and deal with those loud, uh, concussive sound waves damaging the eardrums. Uh, that, that's uh, that's that's basically in a nutshell what these past three episodes have been about. Because I do know it is a major factor. I do know that even I personally, my first three years in the Iraq War was not issued. Uh, earplugs during a war because the guys in the infantry we need to be able to hear each other 
We need to be able to speak, move. And I'm not just talking, you know, having a radio, using throat mics, having uh, headsets with earpieces. We need to you need to be able to hear uh, your team leader tell you to shift right or to go from firing at this particular building or target or group of uh, people to now this other uh, area, depending on your mission or operations that are that are going on. I'm going to close out this episode with another fire track from the Sergeant's Playlist. This one also involves the artist Caleb Daniels. Uh, Caleb is out of Michigan, originally from Kentucky. This next song is titled Listen to You. And you can find Caleb, as I said, on Instagram at I am Caleb Daniels or on Twitter at I am Caleb Daniels. Salute. All I know is what. All I know is shoot All I want is more But I got some things to do I'm a dog of war Hell's what I've been through I'm a dog of war I did it all for you TV Radio I wanna talk about the things that's on your mind I wanna listen to you Wanna listen to you Yeah, yeah We gon' ride tonight I wanna talk about the things that's on your mind I wanna listen to you Wanna listen to you Too much time trying to work on yourself when you ain't even broken. That shit not good for your health. Say you got all these problems and you expect me to help, but how am I supposed to solve them when they solving themselves? But I'ma listen and I told you that to all of your problems that you don't even have. Baby, it's so perfect just the way you are. So I don't wanna hear about your face. Scars. Yeah, we'll go night riding, we can play this While we talk about how your day went If there's anything you gotta vent about I'ma pay attention, I'm patient, that's real And baby, if you try to tell me how you really feel Then we gon' ride for real We gon' ride tonight I wanna talk about the things that's on your mind I wanna listen to you Wanna listen I spend days in the studio, sometimes don't even sleep They say the top is a lonely place, I guess I'ma see But when I get there, I know that I'ma miss your company I hope you don't let it rain When I call you just to talk it out I'll always care about you, please don't block me out Cause when I'm on the road, just know I'll still have time To listen from a distance, yeah, we still gon' ride Yeah we gon' ride tonight, I wanna talk about the things that's on your mind I wanna listen to you, wanna listen to you, yeah, yeah We gon' ride tonight, I wanna talk about the things that's on your mind I wanna listen to you, wanna listen to you Radio.